I am no stranger to unique and custom consoles. We've got a Game Boy DS, a portable GameCube, and then a number of different colorways going on too. So obviously I am always trying to find the next conversation starter. And you know, this is the world's blackest paint and today I'm gonna paint my entire car with the world's blackest paint. Inspiration really does come from anywhere. So yes, I have the world's blackest paint, and I'm going to attempt to make the world's blackest Game Boy. Well, Game Boy Advance, because that's what I have lying around. But this is going to be interesting because I've never really done anything like this before. I mean, I've cleaned up some Game Boys, and I did attempt to upgrade one of them to USB-C. So this will be a learning experience for all of us. But I mean, it's just painting, so what could go wrong? But thanks for clicking on this video, and if you are into retro gaming, nostalgic toys, TV shows, I think you'll like what you'll see on this channel. So give this video a like and consider subscribing. So this paint allegedly absorbs 99.4% of light, meaning it has little to no reflection. And honestly, I can't even really picture in my head what this looks like in real life. So to test it out first, I have this little 3D printed Mario. So let's paint this and see what it looks like. And I got this airbrush, so this will also be a test to see how this works too. Give it a quick test spray. It does come out a lot slower than I thought, but we are ready to go. And when I reviewed this footage back, it's honestly kind of wild to see. You can slowly see him start losing definition, almost giving this 2D effect. And here he is. This is just really wild. And I don't know how well you'll be able to tell on camera, but you really can't see any definition of it from afar. Someone in the reviews on Amazon even described this color as black hole black, and I can definitely see that. Like you gotta put a whole bunch of light right on this thing to even even make it out. Good luck finding this thing in the dark. But all right, now let's move on to the Game Boy. Here is our victim, the like transparent purple Game Boy Advance. It works. It's a little beat up, even the battery cover, definitely the lens, but a perfect patient. So firstly, let's take this one apart. Definitely making sure we are removing all the electronic components. Keep those in a safe spot. I mean, except for this piece of crap. And before we paint, give everything a good scrubbing. And then just to make sure this paint holds as much as possible, we are going to give it a quick sanding. I'm using a really fine sandpaper because I don't really want any big scrapes because I'm not sure if that will still come through after it's painted. Plus, I also want to sand the buttons without having to scrape off the letters etched into them. Again, just to make sure the paint holds some. And I did end up grabbing a new battery cover, so sand that up. And now we are ready to enter the paint zone. I'm trying to get as even a coat as possible. And I'm not entirely sure if we'll need a second coat, but we'll see once it dries. All right, so it's been a few days and here are our parts. We did end up having to do a few different coats for a couple different reasons. Firstly, I chose to do this with a clear shell, not necessarily the best option, because as soon as I held it up to the light, it would show all the imperfections. And then I also didn't prime it either, so that probably slowed down the process too. And then other problems more so with just the paint itself. Well, also with the fact that I'm a noob too. After the second coat, I noted a couple blotches around the frame for the screen. This most likely happened for me holding the sprayer too close to the shell for too long. I debated leaving it like this, but to be honest, it was really bothering me. So I actually decided to re-sand those areas that this happened to and spray it down again. And then throughout this entire process, the paint kept clumping up at the nozzle of the sprayer and I would have to pick it out with a toothpick and then keep going. I think it had to do with the fact that this was a pretty thick paint. So I thinned it down for the last layer. And honestly, I am super impressed with the results. Though so before we assemble, a major upgrade we are going to put in here is a 
a brand new IPS display, which if you aren't familiar with this type of upgrade, just take a look at a quick before and after of an original GBA screen and a GBA screen upgraded to an IPS screen. It's a night and day difference, literally. And I grabbed this one from Handheld Legend, which I'll link in the description. And like I said earlier, I have really only cleaned the inside of Game Boys and have had several failed attempts at upgrading the electronics. Plus I am really bad at soldering, but lucky for me, these later model displays don't actually need any soldering. You just put in your ribbon cable and drop it in. And after a lot of tinkering and being careful not to scratch up the fresh paint, I got it mostly together. And then here's the lens I eventually opted for. I had initially gotten this like clear, well, you can't even see it, but this is a clear lens. And just like everything else, I was gonna sand down the edge of this and paint it, but I just really couldn't get like a clean screen cut out for the frame. So after several failed attempts, I just decided to grab a nice new black one with holographic GBA logo. And while it's not as deep of a black in comparison to the rest of the black of the Game Boy, this was one of the compromises that I just really had to make. And there she is, the world's blackest Game Boy. This thing is wild to look at. Like, I'm not even sure how well you can see that on camera. And frankly, you shouldn't be able to see much until you shine some light directly on it. And then here I have the Game Boy Advance in its original black shell. And to be honest, I'm like speechless on how dark this thing is. And does it still play? Hell yeah, it does. And with the combination of this shell with an IPS display, it's like I'm holding a floating display. So of course I loaded up some games to test this thing out. It was actually kind of funny playing these two because I usually look through the camera screen to see what's going on and I couldn't see where the buttons were at all on screen. but here is kind of the biggest downside of this project. You might've noticed that I always had gloves on while handling it. Well, that's because the paint is just not very strong. And this paint in particular is, well, not really meant for this. So every time you touch it, you will inevitably get black on your hands. Like it just comes off really easily. Like any water or oils will start to make it rub away. And then I'm sure you've noticed some imperfections of it already too. Like there are a couple of chips from putting it together. Any sort of dust particles kind of stick out like a sore thumb. There are some tiny black spots. Well, I mean, the whole thing is one big black spot, but some imperfections of my paint job. Again, probably from not thinning out the paint early enough. And then some edges or high volume touch points kind of already have that velvety looking texture already rubbing away. I did consider putting some protective coat on the outside, but even people in the reviews said it didn't help much and in some cases made it even worse. So while it's the world's darkest paint, it's not the world's strongest paint by any means. Like even check out what the back looked like after taking the cartridges in and out. All that to say this Game Boy Advance is now more so a display piece than one I would use on a daily basis. But either way, this was a really fun project. I was just so, so curious to see what this would turn out looking like. And while I am glad to add the world's blackest Game Boy to my collection, when you take a step back, it's even wilder to see some of the custom Game Boys made by some amazing people in the retro gaming community. From custom shells to absolute abomination. Let me know what your dream Game Boy would look like in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.